Hello beautiful people. So today's video is going to be another HRT update video. The last HRT video I made, um, and I will link to that, and that was my six months on HRT. I got a comment, I think in like January, of someone being like, I'm really excited for your one year HRT update video. And uh, I w had no plans to make that video until I received that comment. And then I was like, yeah, you know what, maybe I should make a one year HRT update video. Um, so as of recording, it has been about one year and three months on HRT. If you're new here, my name is Quinn Burkles. At the current moment, I'm predominantly using the pronouns she and her, and I identify as a non-binary trans woman. Now, before you go all alphabet mafia on me, I just want to say that I'm personally not super attached to labels at all. In general, I think that anybody can really claim whatever labels and whatever language is most useful for themselves. I don't believe in gatekeeping language. Language is just that. These are just words, and these are the words that are useful for me. Um, they may have different definitions for you, and that's okay. It's all good. Non-binary for me is a very political identity, so we live in a world that has created a very deeply entrenched binary system of male and female, and I want to protest that. I actually currently have one of the world's first ever gender X passports, and that's something that is just really incredibly exciting for me. Uh, I feel really grateful to have been able to access one, which is available in the United States. I'm a United States citizen. Being non-binary is my way of saying fuck you to a system that I really don't like. That said, at the current moment in time, my relationship with gender is pretty closely paralleled to binary trans womanhood. And so the label trans woman is useful for me as well because that is really the closest thing to describing my gender in a societal sense, even if it's a box that I don't necessarily want to limit myself to. That is the simplest way that I can explain it. But again, I'm not massively attached to that. If you wanna jump down in the comments and be like, you're wrong, I don't think those labels apply to you. Jump into the comments and call me a man. Like, I literally don't care. I'm here, I'm existing, I'm living out an experience that is authentic for myself and that brings me joy. And that's all really what all of us should be doing. Did not mean to make this so political, except, you know, if you're new here, a lot of my content is quite political, and this is probably one of my more informal personal pieces of content, so maybe the political is actually good because it kind of helps, like, brace you for what the rest of my content looks like if you decide to stick around. Okay, so one year on HRT. This is uh, the last video that I made talking about there, my HRT journey. people! How are y'all doing? How as you can been? see, quite a lot has life? changed for me in the past year. Um, I mean, it's been about eight months since I made that video, nine months. A lot has changed and some things haven't changed, so let's get into it. Since I made that video, my HRT regimen has changed slightly. So when I made that video, I was exclusively taking estrogen um, via gel. Since then, I have increased my estrogen dose a very, very small amount. Um, I'm now on 3mg instead, so basically just a very similar dose, just a teensy bit more. Um, and then I've also started taking progesterone. Describing the change, because obviously in my six month video I was just talking about changes on estrogen, I am currently not on a testosterone blocker. And I started progesterone, I started progesterone because I decided that I did want to explore maybe having a slightly more feminine chest, maybe growing breasts a little bit more, and also because this is a little known fact, but progesterone can actually act as a testosterone suppressor in a very, very minute way. Um, so I started progesterone. I've now been on progesterone for approximately six months now. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's about right. Um, my experience with progesterone has been really positive. Um, so I've definitely had increased breast growth, which is nice. I find that progesterone helps me sleep better. I find that my energy levels are better regulated. I find that, um, if anything, it's maybe slightly boosted my mood. It's kind of hard to measure that. Um, but in general, I have felt very good on progesterone. I have noticed increased breast growth and it has done nothing to suppress my testosterone. So I read that it could potentially have an anti-androgen element to it. That didn't happen for me personally. My testosterone levels are just as high as they were before I started them. So on that note, my testosterone levels are very high still. Um, like they're on the low end of a cisgender man's testosterone levels. So like 
if you look at a cisgender man's um, normal levels, mine are like right at the lowest end to be considered normal. So my testosterone levels are, um, I guess, slightly low for cis mans, but they're still they're still quite high. This is a piece of advice that I think is really useful for non-binary people looking to transition. But as a trans femme individual, you're often told that your body will not feminize at all without blocking your testosterone, and that just isn't true. So this is a photo of um, my body before I started HRT. This is a photo of my body now. As you can see in these photos, my body has feminized quite a lot without testosterone suppression. So my testosterone, again, is still decently high and I have gained hips, I have gained breasts, and um, my facial features have feminized quite significantly. Testosterone suppression might absolutely be what's right for you and your medical journey. However, you can feminize without being on a T-blocker. Um, as long as your estrogen levels are decently high, your body can still feminize. I don't know all of the science behind that. I don't know if my body is a unique case. I know that potentially I may have had more dramatic feminization if I was on a testosterone blocker. Now, when I talk about non-binary medical transition, a lot of times it's assumed that a non-binary medical transition will look different to a binary medical transition. However, non-binary identity does not exist in any kind of assumed path non-binary identity doesn't even have to assume medical transition at all. Lots of people who are non-binary don't medically transition. And a non-binary person's medical transition can look identical to a binary trans person's medical transition as well. I am increasingly becoming that. <laughs> so at the current moment in time, I am actually meant to be starting testosterone blockers soon. <laughs> The reason in the past why I haven't wanted to be on testosterone blockers is because A, I haven't wanted to lose sexual function, that's been something I've had anxiety around, and B, because a lot of testosterone blockers carry unwanted negative side effects, which I have just been terrified by. I have diagnosed health anxiety, so I struggle around all of this stuff. And so for me, when I'm starting new medication, it's like a whole thing, and there are some very common and very affordable testosterone blockers, which I just couldn't be on for my anxiety or for whatever other reason. It just wouldn't work for me. Like for instance, with Spiro and other really common testosterone blockers, I just personally could never take them. And I know that for myself. Um, luckily I have managed to be prescribed for a testosterone blocker, which is outrageously expensive and it's Super unfortunate, however, it's gonna do what I need it to do, and that is good, it's triptolerin. The goal with being on testosterone blockers at the current moment is because I, like, I'm very happy with my body, I'm very happy with my results when it comes to my medical transition so far, um, but I do have spaces that still carry dysphoria for me. One of those spaces is my chest. Before I transitioned, I was like working out quite a lot. I was on this path of really trying to prove masculinity to myself and um, I was somewhat successful. I actually built a lot of muscle around my chest and around my arms and I sort of expected that to just naturally fade when I started HRT, but because I didn't go on testosterone blockers, that just didn't really disappear hardly at all. So I actually still have quite a lot of more conventionally masculine looking kind of muscle development and I'm fully aware that I can challenge these norms and these stereotypes around uh, muscles. I know there are plenty of cisgender women out there who have very muscular chests and I think that's wonderful and beautiful for them. However, at the current moment in time, I think this is what's right for myself. I'm looking to deal with this dysphoria and this feels like a good way to do that. Also, in my last HRT update video, I was talking about how I don't want boobs or don't want like um, significant kind of chest, feminine chest development, um, but that has changed. I actually would really like more feminine chest development. I would like to have slightly larger breasts, um, not significantly, but definitely more than I have so far. I will also say, I have had so many people reach out to me as a result of my last video talking about um, being non-binary and maybe seeking out medical transition for themselves. And a lot of them have shared similar like thoughts and feelings and anxieties to what I shared in that video of fears of growing a big chest and that kind of thing. And to all of you lovely people who have messaged me and been like, I'm non-binary as well, I want to medically transition too, but I'm really scared of growing boobs. I just want to say, if you don't go on a T blocker and you don't go on progesterone, it's very possible you will have like literally no chest growth at all. I think. Like growth of boobs is something that definitely frightens a lot of AMAB non-binary trans femme individuals. Um, and I don't want to say this and then like 
you know, I'm. Sh- it's obviously you are you are you know engaging with a risk that there will be significant chest development. That is a possibility when you start HRT. You engage with the possibility as a trans femme person that you might grow boobs. Like that might happen. However, it's it's possible, maybe even likely, that that will be extremely minimal unless you are on the right HRT regimen to grow boobs. Um, there's a lot of evidence behind that, but to be clear, I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm not an expert on this. A lot of what I'm sharing is anecdotal through my own research on Reddit threads. So. I have no desire to paint myself as a reliable source on what is, you know, medical shit that you should properly research on your own. So a lot of the changes I've experienced since my last update video have to do with starting progesterone, um, but in general, apart from that, there haven't been insane amounts of changes for me. It is worth noting that since the last HRT update video, I did also have facial feminization surgery. That was something that I accessed in December. I made a whole video talking about my experience with that. Um, but I have had plastic surgery. That is obviously another reason why I look different. I went for a very minimalist approach with facial feminization surgery, which means that I didn't get a lot done. Um, so a lot of the changes with my face are changes that came about as a result of HRT itself. In terms of my transition in general, however, outside of HRT, a lot more has happened for me. So I've started undergoing laser hair removal on parts of my body where I had dysphoria. I went into my transition with this slight like, um, like chip on my shoulder, I wanna say, about like um, needing all of my changes to be purely medical. I think even with the content that I've made on this subject, I still had a little bit of a complex around like nature versus technology. We see a lot of transphobia centered around like, oh, however many surgeries you get, you'll always still be a man or whatever. And like, it's just, you know, people engaging in freakish sci-fi shit to try to change their sex. And I think when I started HRT, I was very much like, well, I'm just going to naturally evolve through the process of hormones and genetic manipulation of my body, you know, which is obviously also a little bit sci-fi, um, but hormones are natural. My body naturally has estrogen. And the only thing that I'm doing is just bumping that estrogen up a little bit. At the current stage of my transition, I can say that a lot of that stuff is like centered around shame and centered around trying to combat transphobic ideas. But at the end of the day, like a lot of that stuff is bollocks. Like it's okay to look to science to help affirm yourself. It's okay to look to technology um, to achieve gender affirmation. Overcoming some of that shame and viewing things from that perspective has been really helpful for me because I was just sat around hoping that hormones would do something for my body hair, but without being on a testosterone blocker, that was just a completely unrealistic idea that I had. Other than that, I am still undergoing electrolysis to remove facial hair. Some people asked me in my last HRT update video like how my, my skin was so clear um, and I'm flattered by people who commented that but since my last um, HRT update video I have been undergoing very expensive, very painful electrolysis facial hair removal for like the past six months. So. When I made that video, I still had a lot of facial hair and um, I wasn't wearing any makeup. Actually, I think I was wearing like a very small amount of mascara, but I wasn't wearing anything, um, any foundation. So, you know, um, while being clean shaven, I was able to present with a relatively clear face. Uh, but it's worth noting in that video that I made, to those of you who thought that I like had removed my facial hair at that point in time, I, I had not. I still had quite a lot of facial hair at that time. If you're curious about facial hair removal, that's something that I started before I even started to medically transition, before I had even come to terms with my trans identity. Um, with my facial hair removal, what I did is I did 10 sessions of laser hair removal on my face, and then I have been doing electrolysis again for like the past six months. I would honestly say that facial hair removal is the most miserable part of transition. <laughs> it is such a pain in the arse, it, literally physically extremely painful. I cry in all of my hair removal sessions. Um, it's expensive and it's very slow. Um, so to my fellow trans fans, I just encourage you to be patient with it because uh, it does take a long time. Hair removal is a bitch, but for me, it's been very worth it and it's been very euphoric and I'm almost at the end of that journey, which is really exciting. Other aspects of my social transition that have progressed since our last video is that I do now have my legal name change processed, which is just wonderful um, and really exciting. And yeah, other aspects of social transition, I am presenting femininely a lot more often in public. It's still something that I struggle with. I sometimes pass as a woman now um, in public and I sometimes don't. And this kind of gamble of existing in the social world with 
maybe they perceive me correctly and maybe they do not, maybe I am safe in this environment and maybe I am not, is something that still gives me quite a lot of anxiety and something that I find really difficult to navigate. I have unfortunately experienced transphobic street harassment throughout my transition and um, yeah, those things are, are really difficult. Um, but outside of the world being shit and the financial elements associated with my transition, I am just extremely happy right now. I'm really happy with my transition. I'm really happy with my body and um, I'm really grateful for the life that I get to live as a result of my decision to transition. So there is my one year transition update video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you enjoyed this video, I guess feel free to give it a thumbs up or something and feel free to subscribe and stick around for more content. That's all for me on this one. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.